This is just to show what it looks like disassembled. Um, I should have made it this way in the first place because it was actually easier than making it, doing the bit out of aluminium and machining it all to fit. Um, the welding's ugly, but uh, I just wanted it to be strong, so I sort of went round it a couple of times to make sure there's no, no way that's going to come off. But you can see the, um, the machined face and the little step that the piston fits into and how the gudgeon pin is just uh, tapped through the middle so that when you put the piston on it fits up against there, the pin pulls it all down tight. So like I say that was probably how I should have done it in the first place. Uh, I was just being too lazy to actually cut out the steel. But um, I think that should work. There may also be a way I could possibly clamp this in the mill. Um, you know, using the, the little the little V blocks to hold it. Um, you could maybe set it up in the mill like that. Uh, set it to the correct angle. Um, that may be a way to do it as well rather than mounting it to the piece of angle iron. I think mounting it to the angle is probably better. So, like I say, this will be milled to be flat on the bottom so that'll sit in the vise at the correct 45 degree angle and then I, I wasn't going to use this I was just going to use the the threaded gudgeon and a bolt um, so that the piston basically sits like that um, I'm not sure what's going to be better uh, probably I think either will work. Um, I'm probably going to use the fly cutter to be machining this down, so it's it's a very 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 light cuts. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of movement on it, and I think this this angle iron is thick enough that the the bolt's not going to move if this is all pulled down. It's not going to it's not going to move around like that. So I think I'll probably go with this. Uh, mainly because then I can get a very firm grip on that in the um, in the milling vise on the sides of it once I machine those square. Uh, like I say, that'll be tomorrow's job. I've now machined uh, the step in the first piston. Um, I just made a little tool, a bit like a parting off tool, uh, so that I can basically do it, set the the depth I want, which is basically um, half a millimetre below the deck height, and then just go straight in as if I was parting off. And that cuts really well. I just did it really slowly with a lot of cutting fluid, just to make sure it was all fine. Um, you might be able to see the, the depth of it. Uh, you take it down to 59 millimetre diameter, which is way less than the depth of the piston rings. So given the insides of these pistons are kind of domed it's a bit hard to see but uh, given it's pretty thick in the crown there so taking that amount off isn't going to make any difference I think so I'm going to do the other three of those now um, I have also made up the the little 45 degree angle plate that I will use when I uh, machine the 45 degree pockets on them as well. So this is just a piece of, of heavy angle iron. I milled the ends flat and then put it in the milling vise in a um, in a 90 degree block, sort of like that. I was able to clamp it which let me machine the uh, the edges so it'll now sit flat in the vise. I also ran the fly cutter just over the face just to make sure it's completely flat where the the base of the piston will bolt up against. Um, that worked reasonably well. I always find it interesting that the fly cutter when you make multiple passes you can see the pattern that it makes but you can't feel it. Like there's no there's no step there that you can feel but you can definitely see it. Um, the other good thing is it's, it's even all the way across which means I've got the, the mill set up correctly. Uh, that little jig thing 
ended up working really well. So I've machined the step in the top of the four pistons now. Uh, the only thing that might have made this better was if I had machined a step in this so that I could put this in the same place in the lathe chuck every time, so at the same depth. Um, because of that, every time I changed the piston, I had to reset this. But that was easy enough. I just measured everything a couple of times from multiple directions to make sure I was machining off the right amount. Um, but you can see this is a piston sitting in the block. How the little step now gives the clearance that you need to avoid hitting the head gasket and the, and the bottom of the head. Um, let me get that out. So with those done, the next step will be uh, fly cutting the 45 degree angle on these. And the way you do that is you, you just go down. There's a, there's a known distance to go down um, to make sure you clear the valves. And this is just the little 45 degree jig. Um, basically, there's just a bolt through there holding the, the fake gudgeon pin. Um, I don't have any sort of granite surface plate or anything like that, but the steel plate should be good enough to allow me to measure the height of the pin on each side and then adjust it until they're the same. And then I know I'm machining, I've got this um, uh, perpendicular. So I'm machining the 45 in the exact right place. Uh, it doesn't have to be super critical because obviously you're going to machine enough off to make sure you've got clearance in all cases anyway. So I think if there's a little bit of twist in it, it's not really going to matter. But that can now be held... Uh, in the vice, oh, that is something I didn't account for, which is uh, the pin is actually touching, I think. So this isn't, uh, oops, so this isn't sitting flat. So um, I will have to um, pack this out, but that's okay. I've got some... Um, ground parallels. I could put those underneath there just to lift that up um, while still keeping it flat and then with that clamped in the vise that should be easily secure enough to be able to uh, use the fly cutter on it. The fly cutter of course because you're only taking very very small cuts doesn't put much load on things so I'm hoping that means it all it all holds together uh, which I think it will. Uh, the other thing I should mention is I'm trying to keep these little films shorter to see if the shorter ones don't end up with ads in them. Um, I have no choice whether or not ads get played. I have no idea if they are being put in or not. Um, so maybe if I keep the duration short enough, they won't bother.